please, if you're seeing this, I'm lost and afraid. And I think somebody's inside the house. 911, there's a YouTuber filming in my house without consent. All right, listen to me closely. Get the kids, get out of the house, and cut to voiceover. Cut to voice. Ghosts, goblins, and gamers, oh my. Video games truly are a terrifying place. But who needs pants anyways? And of all the sources of spookiness, books, movies, my junk, video games are undoubtedly the most potent, as the interactive medium allows artists to manipulate the mind in ways no other art form can. And I hate it. When a jump scare jaunts me in a theater, I can just avert my eyes and protect my pride. But in a video game, I am the jump scare. It's happening to me. I can avert my eyes, break my controller, or convert my console, but I'll only be met with yet another scare. The greatest scare of all the game over menu. It's scary because it's true. You see, in a video game, you must actively engage with the content to progress. You must use all these skills at your disposal to survive. Your intelligence, your dexterity, and most of all, your cowardice, as hiding is usually your best bet. The onus to act, or rather, in act is on you and you alone, meaning we are in big trouble. I mean, just look at you. And so to beat the game, you must beat yourself, not off, but rather on, as you must muster your courage to master the greatest fear of all, fear itself. And fear, well, fear is kind of a dick. Just look at him. They're talking about you right now. Oh. They're laughing at They're laughing at your goofy ass f face. God, you're a dick. But what elements make a truly terrifying title? What elevates a game from uh, to, uh, well, that is what we shall explore in this video. And if you don't like spooky stuff, don't worry, I don't either. But together, through the power of friendship and the light of laughter, we can do this together so that we can get you a new pair of jeans, cause gross. I shit myself. So come all ye cowards, ye naive knaves, ye spineless sissies, and enter this haunted house with me. Hop on this adrenaline-fueled roller coaster and just enjoy the ride. Whoa! But of all these spooky ingredients, the simplest, easiest, and cheapest of the thrills is the jump scare. Boo. It's all reliable as it's... Well, it's very reliable. People are easy to scare, and with the right combination of sound, scene, and reveal, a player can be thrown off their mental axis as they're thrown off their physical axis. Ow! But the jump scare is also a double-edged sword, for it can be misused, abused, and overused. Like salt, it's perfect in the small doses and can enhance any dish, but use it too much and you're gonna have a bad time. Ah, you can't even taste the hand. The jump scare shouldn't be the main course of your horror feast, but rather an appetizer. Something to warm the player up, get them uncomfortable, and loosen their mental flaps for further manipulation. Because unsuccessful jump scares can be catastrophic, as they pull the player out of the experience rather than in. It breaks the wall of immersion and says, 
hey Dumbo, this isn't real, and once that brick's been broken, it's near impossible to replace. The show is now over, I've seen behind the curtain, I know how the sausage is made, and now... I can't unsee it no matter how hard I try, and I'm trying real hard, but oddly enough, the purest form of the jump scare resides outside of the horror genre itself. It comes in many forms. The hungry piano, the hungry eel, the hungry fist. It's called the out of genre jump scare, and it fucking sucks. So trusted you, I thought I could too. So why in bloody hell does Makarov know you? <laughs> Please, sir, don't shoot. I just bought this pair of pants. Take a game as pleasant as pea soup and randomly add a jump scare that turns my floor into pea soup. It's so effective because it's so unexpected. Like, in a horror game, you anticipate the jump scare. You expect the unexpected. The lack of jump scares is actually more unnerving than their presence. But in a non-horror game, it's the last thing on your mind. Up to this point, everything's been gravy. I'm frolicking in forests. I'm destroying rare art. I'm endangering species. You know, gravy. So when one of these games suddenly evolves from E is for everyone to E is for empty bowels, it impacts the player in a way no horror game can, as it thrusts unwilling participants into the horror genre, into the nightmare that they never signed up for, meaning they are the least equipped to deal with it. It's like placing a baby on a battlefield, a toddler on a trampoline, or an unsophisticated peasant on a piano. Puh. Pathetic. Oh, thank God, it was just a dream. Boo, this skit fucking sucks! But enough piano poop jokes for one minute, let's talk about the next essential element of a good horror game, agency, or rather, lack of agency. See, most games seek to make the player more powerful, level that hero, build that army, maintain that virginity, and goddamn are you good at it. But in a horror game, you are made to feel weak, vulnerable, and alone and goddamn are you good at it. Where Call of Duty says, here's a gun, now go and run, horror games say, here's a gun, now go and run, because you've got no ammo, and they're inside the house. This is why the spookiest part of Call of Duty Zombies isn't the undead, but rather the living, uh, the players. You're all jacked up on Juggernaug, Speed Cola, and Red Bull, so a zombie is about as scary as a corpse puppet, so not very scary. But in spooky survival horror games like Resident Evil 2, the player may be given a gun, but their agency is severely severed through the use of limited space, light, and resources. You've got six bullets for 60 zombies and zero aim assist, meaning I've got one word for you. Good luck. Well. Game over menu, here I come. Oh, that's right, I used all my bullets. By limiting player agency, the developers open the floodgates to Pandora's Halloween horror box, as it enables many other spooky tactics. See, if the jump scare is the orgasm of video games being quick, cheap, and exhilarating, psychological horror is the foreplay, the slow burn. It's steady and excruciating, as it prolongs your pain like a brand. Take a game like P.T., where you continue 
continually walk down the same hallway over and over and over again with nothing but obtuse objectives to guide your way. Walk ten paces, wait for the baby cry, then cry into the microphone as Lisa the lovely ghost says hello and I say goodbye. I know I promise no more poop jokes, but it's out of my control. This seemingly monotonous repetition of walking down a hallway creates tension in a unique and potent way as it juxtaposes the familiar with the unknown, thus leveraging the mind against itself. Because every time you go around the corner, something different awaits you. You never truly know what lies beyond, and that is worse than the thing itself. The anticipation, the blue Blue balls is more painful than any shock of adrenaline could be because who knows what's down that hallway. It could be a ghost, it could be a goblin, or worst of all, it could be nothing, meaning you're all alone once again with your lonely, loathsome self. You're all alone, you fucking loser. That's not true. Oh, you know it's true. Deep down in your heart, you know it's true. Now I'm alone. PT is a great example of subtly limiting agency by literally limiting movement. You've got next to no space to navigate, and the result is a claustrophobic feeling that sticks to you like some gum on your shoe. And that's what makes video game horror so special and unrivaled. It preys on human psychology like a demonic marketing scheme. It exposes your amygdala for the coward it is focusing on things that unnerve us. Isolation, the unknown, lack of control, and of course, the dark, the greatest enemy of mankind. I mean, just look at our cities. We fear the dark more than we fear each other. A huge mistake, because back in the old times, when humans actually spoke to one another, the darkness was our greatest enemy, our final foe. Forget life. Lions, tigers, and bears, oh my, I can't see what's beyond that bush, and it's really freaking me out. Predators need prey, and I be looking like a snack, baby. Oh, it'd be so terrible if a monster were to, like, eat me right now. Uh, I think that food's spoiled. It's way too desperate. What do you think? Yeah, it's definitely got the ugly. Games like Slenderman, Amnesia, and Dead Space all utilize isolation and darkness to create maximum fear. It doesn't matter that Slenderman looks like a flailing car salesman, you're alone, naked, and afraid in the dark, and that makes anything and everything scary. Apples, oranges, cats, dogs, you name it, it's scary. Anything? <gasps> And after leveraging everything at its disposal to isolate, disempower, and cow the player into being a coward, video games have one final trick up their sleeve one final tool the developers have to really psych the player out of their psyche. The fourth wall break. Hi YouTube! Will you shut the f up? I'm trying to make a video. Whether it be Psycho Mantis violating your console or Eternal Darkness using a sanity meter to mess with your sanity, the fourth wall break is a unique mechanic that games can leverage in clever ways to further pull the player into the world by, oddly enough, reminding them that they are in fact playing a video game. This works so well because although it temporarily breaks the illusion, it allows the game to enter reality itself in a way no other artistic medium can. You start to question if the game is actually watching you. Like, when a movie winks at the viewer with a nice fourth wall break, it's charming and silly. A wink and a nod that we know what's really going on here. But when a video game breaks the fourth wall, 
it's just unsettling. It's almost as if the game is a living, breathing entity and it's inside the house. Nay, inside my console without consent and that is totally not cool, bro. Oh, oh, oh. oh um, Ke Kevin said it was cool if I used your console. No, 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 no! But despite all these terrifying tricks that I, a gamer boy, truly despise, I can't help but to tip my cap to the creative, talented people who create these works of art, because they truly do push the limit of all artistic mediums. And if video games are the next frontier of art, virtual reality is surely the final frontier of horror, because if video games didn't submerge you into a nightmare already, VR surely will dunk your head under the covers by dunking your head into a wall as you run away from a monster that doesn't actually exist. A day that I can't wait for, and can wait for, because I literally just bought a new pair of jeans and I can't afford another accident. <gasps> Damn it.